Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Liz from Blue and Hazel. In today's video, I wanna go through Ambleside Online year five books for you that are scheduled. So if you are thinking about using Ambleside Online or curious what the books are that are scheduled, um, we are in the thick of year five right now. So um, my son has already read through a lot of these books from term one and term two, and we are doing term three right now. So all of these books are coming from Ambleside Online's free printout they have on their website and they've scheduled the books term one, two, and three. And some of those books are gonna go um, trickle throughout all three terms for year five. Some of them will extend um, into several years um, and then other ones will just be kind of quick reads within a term. So. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Liz, I'm a mom of four and we've been homeschooling since my oldest was in kindergarten. He's now in fifth grade. And this is our second year doing a Charlotte Mason homeschool using mostly Ambleside Online. We're not doing everything Charlotte Mason and everything Ambleside Online in our homeschool, but we are following a lot of those principles and using a lot of the recommended books. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe, um, hit the bell for being notified when I upload new videos. And if you enjoy this video, um, thank you for giving it a like. It helps me to know that this is the content that's really helpful for you. So let's go ahead and dig in. If you can see here, this is most of the books and um, you're not reading all of the pages of all of the books, so just keep that in mind. Um, a few of them I have at the top, I actually took out to show you, we are doing these ones family style. So Trial and Triumph is going to be um, one that, you know, they pull a few different people from each of the years, and instead, because I have three kids in different years right now, we're doing, um, instead of the recommended ones each year, I'm just pulling random people that I want to read together family style. And so we're doing that one together. Um, Plutarch's Lives for Boys and Girls. This is a recommended subject that has started in year four and continues into year five on up. And um, we have not started Plutarch yet. So just a little bit overwhelming to do all of it all at once when you're new. So if that's you as well, you're not alone. But I think we are at a point now where probably going into year six, I'm gonna start Plutarch um, with my oldest two because I feel like we've got a better grasp on just the material, the schedule, the books, plus older kids that are now starting to take on more of the reads themselves so we can actually add in a little bit more of um, me reading to them. And then I also have Lamb's Tales from Shakespeare. Uh, these are really fun reads. They're simplified versions, easier to understand language. Um, of the actual plays and each one of my kids has different Shakespeare scheduled on Ambleside Online different years, but I just go ahead and pick one. We do it family style together. Technically my fourth and fifth grader could be doing um, the actual plays. That's what's recommended by Ambleside Online, but we haven't started that. I think maybe next year we will start one for the entire year and just see how it goes reading the actual plays. But this one for now has been great and we can finish a, a play in one to two days together. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you the books that are on this schedule. Um, this is term one, there's term two, and term three. And so we'll go through um, those books in order here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the stack, um, starting with our history books that we're gonna read this year. And we have, first up is This Country of Ours, and volume three is what's recommended um, if you're using Donna Jean Breckenridge's revised book of This Country of Ours. She's, I believe, writing four books. So they've taken the original and she's like chunked them into smaller books um, and just kind of updated some of the material. And um, we really like this. I would say there are a lot of details. <laughs> so, uh, but it's written in an easy to read, understandable way. It doesn't feel like you're reading a textbook. And so um, this is for year five and uh, my daughter in year four has the volume two. So just be sure to check that you have the correct volume. Next up is Answering the Cry for Freedom, Stories of African Americans in the American Revolution. And this has continued on from year four where we read some of the stories in the beginning. Now they're doing about one new story per term for year five and dividing that in between two weeks. So you really only squeeze this in in two separate weeks each term and it's not a lot of reading to do. So don't be intimidated by the thickness of the book. Then we have Lincoln's World, Abraham Lincoln's World. And um, this is very similar if you have done year four to George Washington's World. It follows the exact same format. And um, I would say for my kids, this is one that 
they typically read about one story per day and it's all of the things that are going on in the world during the time of Abraham Lincoln. One thing I wanted to mention about Abraham Lincoln's world is that this is a term one book and so um, probably four to five short stories each week. So we kind of divide that into about one a day. And, um, and then once this finishes up in term one, then Ambleside Online is going to introduce a new book for term two. It's called Carry a Big Stick, The Uncommon Heroism of Theodore Roosevelt. This is a biography that my son reads on his own. Um, thankfully in year five, he has made a big jump and he's reading most of these books on his own now. Okay, and then in term three, when we finish Carry a Big Stick, um, that's when they introduce the story of the world, volume four, the modern age. And they're gonna go through this in term three, about two chapters a week. You will not be reading this whole book. And so um, over the course of term three, two chapters a week is gonna get you to about the halfway point, And that is all that they have scheduled of this book. All right, next up we have Man's Slave Becomes God's Scientist, George Washington Carver. This is a great and very quick biography that we read in a couple weeks, I would say. So you can see inside, it's got um, pretty short chapters. It's very, the language is easy to read, has some pictures in there. And I enjoyed reading this to my son because I hadn't really read anything about his life and it tied a lot of um, what his accomplishments were. It tied in some geography to the South that we um, had lived in before. So that was really fun. And we just enjoyed that book a lot. Right, next up we have Always Inventing, Alexander Graham Bell, a photo biography of him. And so you can see there's a lot of pictures inside. It's a very short book. So I think actually this was a term one book and we skipped it or missed it somehow. So we will probably add this in at some point. That will not take long, it has a lot of pictures. Next up we have Of Courage Undaunted and this is a term one history book that is going to take um, them across the continent with Lewis and Clark has the same exact feel as Poor Richard if you did Ambleside Online Year 4 and um, also by the same author and similar illustrations. And one thing I will say that is kind of cool is you can go on to um, the National Park Service website and request a map from um, the Lewis and Clark expedition. So we did that. They sent us a free map in the mail and that was kind of cool just to kind of clock like their trail and exactly where they were along um, while he was reading this book. Okay, next up we have Madam How and Lady Why. This is our natural history book and it is so bizarre. I don't know what I think about it. Um, a lot of people hate this book. A lot of people love this book and some say I didn't like it until I read it to my second or third student down the line and started to appreciate it more. It's an old, old book by Charles Kingsley and um, each week they have scheduled just a couple pages really. It's, it's a short thing to read each week. But I would recommend reading this with your child because it is so wordy and um, this is the opposite of like a book that would tell you um, just a bunch of facts to remember. This is a thinking book. This is a how to think book. And it, um, it just walks you through some of these topics in a very um, challenging way. And so my kids don't like this book, to be honest. I don't even know if I like this book or wanna continue with my third and fourth kid when they get older. But I'll let you decide what you think for yourself. I'd love to hear in the comments if you have any opinion on that book whatsoever. <laughs> um, next up for geography, we have um, Richard Halliburton's Book of Marvels. This is the version by Living Book Press. And um, each week they have a new incredible place to explore. I actually read this to my son, um, even though he could totally read this to himself. This is one that we read together has usually some pictures, although they're really bad pictures. I don't even know why they include them because they're just not great pictures. But what we ended up doing is Living Book Press has um, a page for each of these chapters on their website with like a YouTube video and some extra really great pictures and color. I just Google uh, Living Book Press Marvels and then whatever the chapter name is and it pops right up at the top and then we go click through there and watch the little YouTube blurb. And um, I think that helps to bring it to life a little bit, especially with the pictures there. So this is a fun one. And that goes term one, term two, and then in term three, we'll begin the second one, which is Richard Halliburton's book of Marvel's The Orient. And so haven't gotten to this one yet, but it has the same style and same flow.
Next up is Wild Animals I Have Known. But this book is going to take you through these different animals and this man's observation of them in real life. It's an older book, but it just gives you a glimpse into their habits and what kinds of odd behaviors that they saw. And I've been doing this combined with my fourth and fifth grader because we're just listening on audio and she can soak this up too. And then I can skip this book with her next year and do something different. Next up we have great inventors and their inventions. Here are a few of the topics that they will be reading about. The steam engine, the steamboat, the locomotive, spinning machines, cotton gin, sewing machine, invention of the reaper, steel making, printing, invention of the telegraph and the telephone. So they'll come to see how all these things came to be and hopefully make some great connections. And then that leaves us with the literature picks for year five. And this is going to be the first one for term one, the story of King Arthur and his knights. We did this family style. I love this book. It's old English and kind of wild to read at first, but this was a huge hit with all of my kids. Um, year two, year four, and year five all loved this book. The next one I don't have here is term two. There's Oliver Twist. That's one that I have been recommended to read with my child. Um, we haven't gotten to it and I'm not sure if we're gonna squeeze it in this year, um, but I would like to eventually read that book with him. And then Kim is going to be the term three literature pick. And I got that on audiobook form. So I'll probably have my fourth and fifth grader listen to that together um, and then pick a new book for her next year in year five. One thing I forgot to mention is Exploring Creation with Human Anatomy and Physiology by Jeannie Fulbright. And this is Ambleside's first time they've really assigned a science curriculum. And I like this book a lot. Um, Jeannie Fulbright is a Christian author and curriculum developer. And so this book is um, coming from a Christian worldview. So as far as how they pace this, they do it very slowly. They um, are only going to cover about half the book, a little less than half, six total lessons in the whole year five. The rest of it will come in year six. And so um, beginning with lesson one, introduction to anatomy and physiology. Then lesson two is the skeletal system. Then they're going to cover the muscular system, the digestive and renal system, health and nutrition, and the respiratory system. That's all for year five, and the rest of this will be covered in year six. Let's just take a peek really quick at what a chapter looks like, or a lesson as they call it. Muscular system. They're going to have um, diagrams. They're going to have headings. There's going to be a lot of terminology that the kids are learning. There's optional experiments or things that you can set up. And so this has been a really just simple and thorough um, anatomy and physiology book. I'm pretty impressed. Um, I took anatomy and physiology in college and some of this stuff I didn't even learn until that point in my life. So the fact that um, my kids will get an introduction to this, I think is gonna be pretty neat. I will say that if you have a kiddo that loves comic books, I would skip lesson four of this and go straight to the science comic book um, that I can link for you. But my son read that and he basically told me back all these terms, what they were. He had already learned all of this from um, lesson four in the science comic. All right, that's all the books that I have on the year five book list. Um, so far, it's been a really enjoyable year and I think a little history heavy, but overall pretty good. Um, Age of Fable is one that I knocked off our list for um, our family. It just thinned out our year. It has been um, too many books to really squeeze in. And so I wanted to figure out what are the ones that were most important to me. You can decide to leave out any of these books. That's the beauty of homeschooling. Thank you for watching guys. And I hope this was helpful to you. We'll see you next time.